You love Italy, but it's more than that. You yearn for Italy. It's, it's very hard to explain, but it's a country that takes a hold of you and you feel that deep aching in your chest, in your stomach, in your head. You're like a schoolgirl in love, just totally distracted. Anytime you hear Italian in the street or you, you finish a film that is set in Italy, or maybe you're just scrolling Instagram and you see a picture that transports you and makes you think, I, I need to be there. Or, or perhaps not, perhaps makes you just dream and think, what if I lived there? It, and you don't explore that hypothetical because you think it's too hard. I could never do that. And you see people who are living over there, you think, yeah, but they, they must have had a lot of money or they must have already spoken the language or they must have a lot of contacts. It must be easy for them because I could never do that. Well, I can tell you, there is good news and bad news. It is hard. It is really harder than you could ever expect emotionally, financially, but in, in the years that I've lived and worked and had relationships and started companies and done all these things in Italy and I have been broke, heartbroken, frustrated, lost, alone, not one time did I ever regret moving. Oh, a series of things have just gone wrong. Then my landlord called and, uh, and said she needs me to be out of the house by the end of the month. So that's uh, in like a week, I need to find a new apartment. And I can't afford to pay the rent as well. I've run out of money, I haven't told her that yet. The thing that scared me the most and that still scares me is the idea of just living your whole year in anticipation of one holiday or these people who say, you know, thank God it's Friday or living for the weekend. No, I find that the most depressing thing ever. Like you're just living constantly with the hope of, of something in the future that is going to make you happy. Like what about now, this moment, every day? Obviously we all have to do the, the imperatives like earning money and household chores and exercising and paying bills, but I wanted to live somewhere where you could do all of that but have this heightened stimulation where you could be surrounded by moments of beauty. Of course, not every single second of your day is going to be cinematic and, 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 and gorgeous, but I think that it, the environment that you live in does have an effect. And I always think if you find something in this world that can make you feel that intensely, how can you not explore it? How can you not try at least to, to get more of it in your life? And when I was planning my big escape and trying to work out if it was even feasible, I, I wish that I had had someone or some resource uh, like this to kind of guide me or just motivate me to say, you know what, don't give up, it's worth it. Or just to sort of comfort me or inspire me and say, it, it is hard, you're not, doing it the wrong way it's just this is this is what it's like to be an expat and to to make that move and I think some of the advice uh, I'm about to share could be relevant for any expat anyone planning to move to a foreign country I've lived in Japan in London in Monaco in Spain and I can tell you that there are some uh, coping skills, I guess, or, or strategies that you can use to make things seem a little bit less overwhelming. I am romantic, but I've never been one of these girls who meets a boy and, and says, that's it, I see myself marrying him, I imagine our children, I'm writing my name out with his surname, imagining us already wed. No, I, I'm not like that. But with Italy, I am. I have just always had this, this, this clarity, this certainty, this, this fidelity, I guess. Um, and I think that you know, if you find something in life that makes you feel that intensely, you owe it to yourself to explore it. It might be a colossal disaster, but you have to follow it. No, like you cannot, you cannot let that go because it's just, it's just rare. So. Here are the questions. A while back I did a Q&A and, and a lot of you sent questions in about moving to Italy, learning a foreign language, uh, or just moving overseas and, and doing it alone. How far ahead do I need to plan? How much does it cost to live in Italy? What are Italian men like to fall in love with? What if I don't know anyone? How do I learn the language? What if I miss my family and friends? 
what about the visa, how hard is it to find a job, and what if it just feels like a completely impossible dream. The first thing is the timing. Now in the movies, or a lot of the time when you see these inspirational quotes on Instagram, I mean, they really advocate dropping everything. Once you know what you want, just don't waste another day of your life uh, in a situation that, that isn't making you happy. Uh, I don't know, I, I don't know about that because I would say if you want to move to a foreign country or to Italy, you need a year. I would give yourself a year, that's what I did. If you are going to make a dramatic life change, then you want it to be sustainable. You want to give it the best chance possible. There is no point in going all the way over to a foreign country, setting yourself up with an apartment, trying to learn the language, only to find that in six months or even, even one month, uh, you run out of money, you feel emotionally drained. I was in Italy after a holiday several years ago and, and, I, and I just decided then and there, I remember bawling, like sobbing, at the train station and thinking, ah, oh, I can't do it. I can't, I can't go back to my, my, my life. I can't, I, I can't go into that office anymore. I can't pretend like I'm passionate about that work anymore because I'm just not. It was a job that I, I loved as a magazine editor, but I, it had just become monotonous and I, I wanted, I wanted more out of life and I, I didn't want that routine, I wanted spontaneity, I wanted a challenge. I like, I, I, I'm very attracted to the challenge of living in a foreign country because it forces you to be more alert, more awake, more just, I don't know, just to feel more. It takes a lot of patience and self-motivation because you then have to think, right, I've got to put up with this situation that is, is depressing me or this life that I'm not, I'm not excited by for 12 months. I spent that year making lists, making budgets, write down everything you could possibly spend your money on. When you prepare a comprehensive budget while you're back at home, it means that when you get over to Italy, you can just live the Dolce Vita and not worry so much because you've already worked out your parameters. I would say if you can, the ideal is to go over with enough money saved to live without finding a job for two months because it could take that long and you will have a lot of other things to take care of when you first arrive. So I saved up for a year and I was completely boring. I didn't go out, I didn't spend a lot of money on myself. I was just focused. I was working full time until about 11 p.m. in an office. I, I would also on weekends work as a, as a waitress to make extra money. Have you heard that quote? Um, I'm not gonna remember it correctly, I know, but it's something like live for a short time as others won't so that you can live for a long time as others can't. And I love this because it's, it's true. It's like, you, you know, a year really is not that long uh, to, to sacrifice, to just be in preparation mode. You won't need much for transport because Italian cities are almost all very walkable or you can buy a new bicycle for 80 euro, just carry it up into your apartment or it will get stolen. You won't need much for food because you can shop at markets. I cook every day at home but an average main in a trattoria costs about 10 euro. You will need to allow though for ferry tickets and train tickets because Italians are very spontaneous and they think nothing of going across to the island of Capri or Ponza for a weekend or up to Tuscany for a party in a castle and invitations like this will come every week whether you're male, female, young or old. If you're living in Florence or Rome or one of the big cities then and you want to live alone then I would say like about 1200 euro a month is what you would need for rent. You can find a one bedroom apartment in, in, in the historic center as well, which for me is, is super important because I think if you're gonna to go to all that trouble of moving to Italy, then don't live in the suburbs. Don't live in a, in a place that, you know, an apartment building that's modern and that just feels, it could feel like anywhere in the world. No, like you might as well have stayed at home. Like live somewhere that is a thousand years old and has beautiful stone walls. And for me, that was a priority because I, I, I need that. I need to have this beauty around me. 
in order to get through the times when you haven't found a job, you're completely alone because you can't make friends, and everything feels like it's going downhill. And I don't necessarily mean living in luxury either. I mean, my first apartment had no windows. So imagine that, I walk in, completely dark. I had to just light candles because often the electricity went out and my landlord wouldn't do anything about it. Um, and then uh, there was even a period where my toilet wouldn't flush. I'm sure you've heard me, if you've read any of my writing, you would have heard about that sort of experience as well, where I was forced to go out uh, into the nearest bar just any time I wanted to use the toilet because it was really quite a rustic apartment. But I loved it because it was in the center, in the very center, and I would walk outside and I would just feel like, yes, I am in Italy. I would definitely recommend setting yourself up with a temporary rental apartment or a room in a convent, which you can rent out quite cheaply. Don't set up your apartment before you go over because it's just so hard to look at photos and understand what kind of palazzo it is, what kind of zona, what kind of area it is, and you're just better off going and doing that in person. The other reason is that when you're there in person, you'll find there are all these little uh, notices stuck up on, on, on walls or in, in doorways saying affittasi, and this means to rent. And there's a, usually a phone number, which, which means you're directly in contact with the landlord and you cut out the agency so you're getting a better price, you get a better personal relationship with your landlord. All of the apartments that I have rented in Rome, in Florence, in Positano, I have found not through an agency, not through a website, but from just being there in the street talking to people. Oh my gosh, it's got these little windows that open up and you look through the trees out to the sea. I mean, it's just, oh, it's like my dream apartment. It's tiny, but it's perfect for me. And, and, and here it is, I found it. Just from, you know, speaking with a complete stranger on a beach playing chess. Oh. I guess you can think like, is it worth it? Back to dating, because I know that's what you really want to find out. And he said, oh, mamma mia, Kylie, donna, non fare la napolitana. But you know, but they have to appreciate that I'm doing the whole relationship in a foreign language. Thank you for watching. Keep in mind, this is just my personal story. Everyone experiences a country differently. Please subscribe, and if you have any questions about Italy, put them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them in part two. Ciao, alla prossima.